This is the Oklahoma Sports Podcast presented by OklahomaSports.net. Stay tuned for interviews and information about high school, college, and professional sports around the state of Oklahoma. Now here's your host, Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for stopping by the podcast. Today our guest is Roger State baseball coach Chris Klimas, whose team has had a pretty good weekend with some firsts for the program, getting the first ever win in Claremore over the perennially powerful St. Mary's, and not only getting a win there, but a series sweep as well. Congratulations on the weekend, Coach. Yeah, thanks. It was a good weekend to be a Hillcat. I appreciate it. <laughs> you go into those three games, and, and you all have been steadily increasing as – the season has gone on improving records wise and and not only that but individual and team statistics you went 4 and 0 last week with the three wins against St. Mary's and also a midweek win over Northwestern you all have won 9 of the last 11 talk about your week man i tell you what it, it, baseball is a funny game uh, it's very difficult to be consistent especially when you're when you got 18 to 22 year old kids in, in the uniform that you're relying on uh, and, and probably in about an eight-day stretch, we probably played our worst baseball game in Saturday against St. Edwards where we just got embarrassed and didn't do anything well. Uh, really felt like we were trending in the other direction. And then probably had our best week, most consistent week, uh, beating a really good Northwestern team, which is one of the best offensive clubs uh, in the region, on Tuesday uh, to actually beat them the second time this year. We beat them up there in Alva the week before. And then, and then came in this weekend against St. Mary's, who's probably the team we've had the most trouble trouble with uh, since we've been in the Heartland Conference. I mean, I don't, even, I don't think we've beat them in Claremore yet. Um, and only the second time to win a series is against them and to, and to sweep them. If you would have told me uh, that would be the week that we would have, uh, I probably would have lost a lot of money on that one. <laughs> Your team is 22-10 and 10 overall, though, Coach. 7-2 and two in the Heartland. And that's a big deal because this is pushing toward now in the home stretch of the season the possibility of making it to the Heartland Conference Tournament. We'll talk about that in a moment, but how you get here, though, through the week week is is good pitching as well and and you you shut down you you talked about the the powerful northwestern offense but what you did against st mary's was strong as well Corey murphy uh, gave up only one run on six hits in a win in game one jackson simons guard gave up only one run in uh, on four hits in a win in game two and he's six and oh for you now and and in game three preston witten gets the win brock noten gets the save but it was sean robinson who comes in in the eighth with a one-run lead and runners on, and he pitches a one-two-three inning to get you guys out of the jam. I mean, you guys have had some solid, solid work on the mound. Yeah, we we had solid work on the mound all weekend, uh, and, and and that's difficult to do against a team the caliber of St. Mary's. So uh, that's where it all starts. I mean, the, old, the the saying always is, uh, "Momentum's only as good as the next day's starting pitcher," and and we got some real quality work from our starting pitchers. Uh, the most consistent uh, that our that our starting staff has thrown for us on a weekend. And hey, we're picking hopefully picking the best time of the year to play our best baseball. But you know, there, there's a couple things that you know playing our. I don't know if you've ever been to our field here uh, in Claremore, and it's kind of a nightmare for a lot of teams to come here. Uh, going back to you know the 13 years I spent at Oklahoma. Baptist University. We hated coming up here because <laughs> the ballpark we had, the ballpark we had, the ball flew out of there. Uh, you know, we scored runs by the bucket full down there, and then when you would come up to Claremore, the wind always was blowing in. The, the field kind of set down in a hole, uh, and it, it's difficult to score runs here. It, it's it's unlike any other field in this region. I mean, it's just a graveyard, and so uh, we've got to we've got to do things a little bit differently here than than you know than other the way other teams in this region built build their teams uh so a couple of things are you know kind of pillars of our program and that's playing great defense and having uh pitch to contact pitchers um because you know if you if you get a bunch of pitch to contact pitchers at, at a lot of the other fields in our league you're going to give up a bunch of runs because the ball flies out we're here it's kind of the opposite and so the last couple of years we've we've had really good bullpen work we've had guys on the back end of the bullpen that do a really good job can spin breaking balls uh, that command the zone really well. Uh, going back to you know our All American closer for two years and Rusty Huber and Justin Magstad before him and Landon Nealon. And, and this year it's taken a little bit of time, but I think we boast two of the best uh, back end of the bullpen uh, arms in, in our league, and that's Sean Robinson from the left side and Brock Noten on the right side. And both of those guys had a, had a big part in what we were able to do this this past week. Uh, Sean now, his, his numbers are really good. I think he's only given up 11 hits in 21 innings. He came into a big jam with the bases loaded and was able to 
uh, to get a, gave up a sack fly and then got the next two guys out to get out of that jam uh, with still a one-run lead where it was kind of a situation where Coach Brown and I are sitting there, if we can just get out of this inning tied and give ourselves an opportunity, and Sean did, did one better than that, and we were able to tack on a big uh, insurance run there. And then Brock Noten was really good. I think he leads the league with, right now with seven saves. So uh, getting that help from the back end, uh, that's something that, that we rely on and we count on year in and year out is, is one of the pillars of our program. And the thing that we haven't had is, is consistent starting pitching and really getting the depth and length out of those guys in the starting rotation. Uh, and so that, to me, that was the big difference this weekend was the length that we were able to get out of our rotation and the quality work that we got from them. It definitely came in handy there in Game 3. You win 6-1, then 7-1, and then 7-5. You talked about that victory in Game 3. Speaking now with Chris Klimas, the head coach at Rogers State, whose team is 22-10 and 10 overall. I mentioned that. Number 10, though, in the South Central Regional standings, and that is a big deal as well. You're pitching solid, and, and it sounds like a, a big-time home field advantage there in Claremore. The bats have come alive of, of late as well, and, and that really – you know, it's the right time for that as well. Brendan Griffith started out the season not doing so well <laughs> at the plate, didn't yeah. get his first hit of the season until game five. And I'll tell you what, he has come alive. He's batting two fifty three right now, but in his last four games, he's four sixty two for you, Coach. Yeah, he's swinging it really well right now. And, and you know, last year he kind of did the same thing. He started out really slow, then caught fire about the last six weeks of the season and went on to have a really nice year last year. Uh, and he's kind of following that same pattern this year. But, you know, when you get into conference play, you, you're going to have to drive in big runs. You're going to have to have somebody step up and drive in big runs. And, you know, the, the top five, six guys in our batting order have been consistent all year and, and have had really big years for us. And the struggle for us has been the bottom of the order, uh, which is where Brendan, you know, finds himself. So he plays second base, plays a tremendous second base defensively, and he's uh, really struggled offensively just to find any consistency. But he, he swung it really well this past week, and he's starting to catch fire at the right time for us. Coach, two more players that hit the ball for you well this week. Brandon Bradshaw and Grant Ferris were both 6-for-12, both with four RBI. <laughs> How about that? And Ferris 4-for-5 yeah. for in game two. Yeah, that that was big. Ferris is a guy that's that's been struggling for us a little bit. You know, coming out of the, uh, coming out of last year, he caught fire at the end of the season as well. Um, and then in the fall, he was probably our best player in the fall. I mean, he swung it really well, hit probably close to 600 this fall for us. And, and we expect him to be a guy that that would carry the offense for us. And he had a really good start to the season, uh, and he hit, hit a little bit of a slump here the last couple of weeks. Uh, and I think he pretty much, I think he doubled his his doubles total uh, just this past weekend, and so it was a good time for him to catch fire because Brandon Bradshaw has been swinging it really well. Nick Follett has been swinging it really well, driving in a lot of big runs for us. And we've got kind of a RBI battle there with uh, Ferris and Follett going on right now, and and Bradshaw's probably been swinging it better than those two guys here as of late. <laughs> Uh, so when you got that three-headed monster in, in the middle of the order, uh, there, there's not really uh, much room for the opposing pitching staff to navigate because those three guys are swinging it really well, and that there's no situation that's too big for them. They, they step up in big situations, RBI situations. Uh, in game in game three, it's about the fourth inning. Uh, they intentionally walk Grant Ferris, who'd hit four to four or five doubles already on the weekend. They intentionally walk him in the fourth or fifth inning. Uh, put runners at first and second with two outs, and Bradshaw comes up with a big two-run double to right center behind it. So there's really not, uh, you know, there, there's not a good answer for opposing pitchers uh, on who to face there in the middle of the order, as well as those guys are swinging it right now. We just hope that continues. The Hillcats, number ten in the South Central Regional standings right now, Coach. You all are number two in the Heartland Conference standings right now, second in the league. The team just ahead of you, Lubbock Christian, also in the South Central Regional standings. The team just below you in the standings, Oklahoma Christian, also in the regional standings as well. So Heartland Conference represented right now. And as your season winds down, you all go to Fort Smith this week. But you close out the year against those two teams that are right up there at the top with you. I mean, your schedule's not doing you any favors <laughs> to try to push you on into the postseason. No, there, there's no off weekends uh, in this league. And with only eight teams in the league, and you, so you only have seven conference series, uh, our league's always tight like this. Um, you know, getting the sweep against St. Mary's and putting yourself in a strong 
second place position. That's great. I told the guys that you know, all that really does is, is puts your fate in your own hands, and you got to go and play well the rest of the way. Uh, and I told them, I said, act like you've been there before, but we ain't ever been there before. So, you know, so it, it's a nice position to be in. Uh, but with only seven weekend series in our conference being only having eight teams, um, you know, you can have a bad eight day stretch and, and go from a solid second to being on the outside looking in. So. There's really no, there's really no off weekends, and you, you gotta, you gotta play every weekend. Uh, you gotta play desperate baseball. You gotta play like it's important to you. You gotta play de- with desperation, like every game matters uh, because they do. Because there's not a whole lot of a whole lot of time and weekends to make up ground if you have a bad weekend. Well, you said it though, Coach. You all are in the right position right now, at least to push toward that to earn a berth in the Heartland Conference Tournament, a place that Rogers State has not been in the postseason baseball tournament. Top four teams will be a part of that this season, and Rogers State now in the number two spot in the league standings. Coach Chris Klimas, thank you very much for taking time with us today here on the Oklahoma Sports Podcast, and success to you all as you push toward what to this point has been an elusive berth in the Heartland Conference postseason baseball tournament, but you're pushing toward it now, so success to you all. Thanks. I appreciate the call. 